I didn't notice you come in. I'm Mr. Rogers, and this is my review of the 2020 Dell XPS 15 9500. My model came equipped with a 4K touchscreen display, an Intel Core i7-10750H CPU, an NVIDIA GTX 1650Ti GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Let's have a look. And just look at that stunning UHD Plus display. The display is the first thing you notice about this laptop, with four-sided Infinity Edge bezels, 3840 by 2400 resolution behind a Gorilla Glass touchscreen. The display gets very bright and is color accurate for creators and media consumers alike. Using my Spider-X Pro colorimeter, I measured the display to be very accurate covering 100% of sRGB, 99% of Adobe RGB, and 87% of DCI-P3 color space. Below the display, we find an all-new keyboard and trackpad, both of which are the best I've found on a Windows laptop. With the keyboard easily besting, the new Apple Magic Keyboard, and the touchpad giving Apple a run for its money. Flanking the keyboard are two upfiring stereo speakers. They sound excellent and can easily fill a standard room with music. They aren't quite as good as the speakers found on the MacBook Pro 16, but unless you play them side by side, you won't be able to tell the difference. One thing to note is that the included Max Audio Pro software can be a bit tricky to use, but I found that turning on all three tabs created the richest and loudest sound profile. Let's have a listen. <laughs> For connectivity, we are treated to two USB-C ports supporting Thunderbolt 3 and a lock slot on the left side of the device, along with a full-size SD card reader, headphone jack, and USB-C 3.2 port on the right side. All of the USB-C ports support power input for charging the device. Onboard Wi-Fi is a killer module supporting Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. The system charges with an included 130-watt USB-C power adapter but you can use any USB-C power adapter that supplies 60 watts or more. I tested the 61 watt 13 inch MacBook Pro adapter, as well as the 87 watt 15 inch MacBook Pro adapter, and each charged the XPS, albeit in a slower charging state. Battery life is very good on the XPS 15 9500. I've been getting around five hours on max brightness during mixed use. Lowering the brightness will give you significantly better battery life, while still providing a very usable level of brightness. At 25%, I measured over 8 hours, which is impressive for a 4K display. Watching a 1 hour and 20 minute 4K YouTube video at 70% brightness, with a few other background apps running, resulted in the battery draining to about 70%. Unlike the XPS 17 9700 with its RTX 2060 GPU, the XPS 15 does not experience battery drain while plugged in under full load. In fact, the battery will still charge slowly. Charging is fast during general use with the included adapter. The 
The build quality of this machine is excellent. It rivals anything that Apple produces or Razer um, and certainly beats out the likes of HP or Asus or MSI. Um, I've been very impressed with the rigidity and how dense this machine is, despite its relatively small form factor. The display is gorgeous. Um, the webcam is lacking, and I found that with Windows Hello, it's very finicky about getting the right angle in order for it to log you in. That's a bit of nitpicking, but it is worth mentioning. Moving on to performance, I first have to mention that Dell's Power Manager has thermal profiles that greatly impact the performance of this machine. We'll get into a second which ones you should choose and why, but generally, I recommend you stick with the optimized setting, as that gives you the best balance of performance, thermals, and noise. Here is a look at some productivity and gaming benchmarks. performance is very good. This isn't a gaming laptop, but it can play most games at 1200p and 60fps at medium settings. Certain games like Civ 6 are even playable at 4K. I've been thoroughly impressed with the XPS 15's performance while maintaining desirable temperatures and keeping fan noise to a minimum. What do you think of the Dell XPS 15 9500's performance? Leave a comment in the section below and let me know. And while we're at it, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support the channel and catch all my future videos. Speaking of temperatures, on idle, they're very respectable in the low 50 degrees Celsius. Externally, the XPS never gets too warm to have on your lap unless you're playing an intensive game. I was even able to edit in Premiere comfortably with the XPS on my lap. The optimized thermal profile really keeps the fan noise to a minimum, unless the system's under intense load. General mixed use will have the machine be totally silent, while productivity tasks will kick the fans on at a very minimal level. Power tasks, such as gaming or benchmarks, will ramp the fans up, but they never drowned out the room. If you're in an office setting or at home with a roommate or partner, this is an ideal laptop because you can perform a variety of tasks without disturbing other people with rowdy fans. If you need the XPS to be even quieter, you can set the thermal profile to quiet, but note that performance will be slightly throttled and system temperatures will be a bit higher. I've noticed no coil whine with my XPS and no problems with DPC latency making this computer a great choice for audio work. Now let's discuss the elephant in the room, which is Dell's quality control. I ordered my XPS on June 28th, and I have no issues with my display or trackpad. However, people who bought their machine in earlier batches have reported quality control issues with the trackpad, speakers, and other components. Dell acknowledged the problem and promised that all units going forward would be fixed at the factory. So let's hope that's the case, because for $2,000, there is simply no reason for any widespread quality control issues with this machine. $2,000 is a lot of money, and that's about what my machine costs. But I think you're getting a lot for your money when you compare it to rival offerings. A similarly equipped MacBook Pro 16 will cost hundreds of dollars more and will include a weaker GPU and no ability to upgrade the system after purchase. Dell has wisely provided us with the ability to upgrade SSD and RAM on our own. This makes sure that the system stays viable for years. I'm actually going to be doing RAM and SSD upgrades on my machine, so if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below, and I can put a video together. So should you buy the 2020 Dell XPS 15 9500? Uh, the short answer to that is yes, absolutely, 100% you should buy this computer, okay? If you're doing any kind of content creation, artistic work, graphic design, um, and you like to be able to play some games on the side, you like to be able to watch YouTube videos and Netflix videos in gorgeous 4K, um, and you'd like to be able to do all of that without making your partner, roommate, uh, fellow person at the coffee shop raise their eyebrows uh, about the design or the noise, then this is the laptop for you. It's a little bit expensive, but I think when you compare it to the other options on the market, 
it's absolutely worth it. You get a great port selection, you get a stunning display, excellent battery life, very strong performance, and just an all around workhorse of a machine. I really can't recommend the 2020 Dell XPS 15 9500 highly enough. Well, that's all for today, neighbor. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button below. And to catch all of my future content, make sure to subscribe. See you next time.